Hello, this is Jay. Welcome to my channel. Thought I'd just let you know where I've been staying. I'm at Bighorn National Forest. It's in central Wyoming. I drove through a town called Bighorn to get up to this area here. And uh, it's at about 4,000 feet and where I've been staying is 7,000 feet. But it's absolutely beautiful up here. You can probably see that road. It's the main road that goes through. It actually cuts through the entire national forest. So. I came up over there and I'm going to head on through and just go out the other side and there are four hikes I kind of want to do on the way so I'll stop at those and it seems like there's a lot of dispersed camping just throughout so I'm going to stop wherever. Way over there there's snow capped mountains I don't know if you can quite see them but those are in the Clouds Peak Wilderness area which is in the middle it's mostly southern area of the National Forest and uh, I looked up some of the hikes there and there is a way up to get to the top of Clouds Peak, which is the highest point in this whole area. Um, that's the north side, and there's a lot of snow there, so I kind of want to do it, but they were saying that July through August is the best time to do it, so I think I'm just going to drive through this way, cut out the, cut through the National Forest, and go through and go to Grand Tetons, because um, once you go through this way, it's actually a huge roundabout to get to the southern area. And the other only other option is to go back down through Bighorn and come through south but I think I'm gonna go to the Tetons now because I don't know I keep reading that people go on vacation in July August and that June isn't as popular although I think it's been pretty busy so I'm gonna go through there drive through Yellowstone go to Grand Tetons do a bunch of stuff there and then maybe in mid July I'll drive through hit the southern end of Bighorn and just try to do a bunch of hikes and hoping uh, my stay at Grand Tetons will get me in good enough shape where I could actually summit Clouds Rest because it's a little over 13,000 feet. And the highest I've been in a long time is maybe 9,000. So I need to acclimate more. I know 13 is, is a bit higher. So I have to get ready for that. And uh, for now, I'm just enjoying this area. I flew the drone around for a while just to get a good view of everything. But the last two days, it's been raining a lot. Um, I'm wondering if it's been snowing up high, I'm not sure. But from here, my campsite is actually just right down this little dirt road. And it's on the right, you can probably see my car. But there's a hill right next to us. It's a, uh, the map says it's a television conversion tower, which is right over here. It's not very high. And there are power, power lines going through everywhere. There's ranches and things just dispersed throughout, so reservoirs there's some houses over there it's kind of odd I'll show you the views over here it's absolutely amazing so there's the road there and it won't look as cool on camera but <laughs> it's a big drop off and there's towns over there I believe Buffalo is to the south of that area and then Bighorn is kind of straight ahead and then Sheridan which is another bigger town is up there somewhere but it's, yeah, the camera doesn't do it just as good a view. I'll just kind of show you some of the drone footage I have of the towns because you can see that a lot better. But it's beautiful up here. And just being able to camp out and just look out and see these beautiful snow-capped mountains is amazing. <laughs> look at all these ATVs. There are four ATVs, yeah. There's a lot of the traffic going around. Every once in a while, someone will actually drive up this road to come up here because of the views up here. And this road actually goes to the right. And there's another hill that goes to another TV conversion tower. I believe maybe it's on top of this one. And the topographic maps make it look like it's going to be really good view. So I'm going to actually go out there maybe in a little bit. There's a way to drive out there, but I think I'm just going to walk up there. I'll lock up the car and walk. It's not really far, so not bad I need to exercise anyway it's just beautiful huge open meadow there's a little birdhouse over here there's supposedly bears and mountain lions but all I've seen so far are cow droppings everywhere <laughs> but that's it pretty nice quiet spot protected from the Sun from all these trees it's really nice so that's the plan for now. I'm just gonna take my time and drive west along this road through the National Forest and just kinda enjoy myself. 
fly the drone around so you can get some good views of the area. Um, the center wilderness area, there's a road that goes through some reservoirs. It looks like you can hit the northern area. So I'd like to just kind of peek by, not fly the drone in of course, but just kind of peek and then come back north to the road and head west. There's a lot of little detours I like to take, so I'm going to spend a good amount of time going through. Um, the only thing that limits how long I could stay out before going into civilization is water. But there are reservoirs and creeks along the way. I can actually filter some and get some water that way. I have about four gallons and it's funny how you think in different terms of like, I don't know, it's all about supply, resupply, what you do, when, but yeah, so if I hit a creek or a reservoir, I'm going to filter up some water so I don't have to go into town because I have plenty of food and fuel and everything else. There's a lot of bugs out here. So back to my car and I will talk to you later when I head up to the other TV tower. All right, bye. Okay, so I'm off to head to the other TV tower. It's, uh, it's a really short walk. I'm wearing flip-flops. <laughs> it shouldn't be too rugged. I'm gonna stay on, it's an ATV trail and uh, any car can drive it. I'm gonna stay on that so it's not gonna be too bad. It's not gonna be tall grasses or anything. I drove up there halfway earlier and it was a camper park there but it looked like nobody was there. There were no vehicles or anything. I'm not sure if I don't know, you see satellite pictures, there's just campers everywhere, but no cars. I guess it makes sense that people go do things during the day. But kind of looks like people are just leaving their campers up here in preparation for hunting season. Maybe they're trying to stake out spots. I'm not quite sure, in fact, I could see it up there. No vehicles though. So today, I have my drone. The Mavic Air 2. I'm gonna see about flying it when I'm up there. And uh, there you go. Partly doing this because it's all up, so it's a little bit of exercise. Not too bad. And maybe we'll see a bear. Doubt it though. <laughs> Now part of the reason I'm staying here several nights is because I found out that uh, by accident kind of <laughs> a couple nights ago was a new moon and it coincided with new moon rise being at the daytime and it's setting around 10 o'clock. So at night it's perfectly clear. You can see the Milky Way. It came from over there all the way across and the first night there was no clouds at all. I woke up late. I managed to take a bunch of pictures and I tried to do a time lapse, but it's like a two hour time lapse and the sky gets bright before four o'clock. It's because the sky gets brighter way before sunrise itself. So that didn't work out. So last night I tried to do it again, but it was just too cloudy. So I don't know, I recorded one, but then it got uh, brighter again, so it kind of ruined the end. But it was funny, I woke up at midnight, too cloudy, 12.30, woke up every half hour, constantly checking. And then eventually at around two o'clock, it looked good. But that was that. So while I'm here and while the moon is still rising during the daytime, I'm gonna, Try to get another uh, Milky Way time lapse going. I never did one before, so it's kind of exciting. Hopefully, I can integrate it in, in with this video <laughs> so you can kind of see it. But we are a little about 7,200 feet, so nice and close to the sky. Ah, here's a camper, no vehicles. I'm already right out of breath. We're about halfway there, I think fence over here. This caution, no trespassing. Must be private property over this way. But there's a dirt road that goes this way. I'll just keep going up. Tina will get a huge kick out of this. I was walking up this hill and I heard dumping sounds. So I stopped. 
looked around and I can actually just hear my heartbeat. <laughs> thump, 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 thump. So, no moose or anything charging me. Just my heartbeat. <laughs> oh, we're going down. I don't think we're gonna be able to go up to the hill. But we are heading towards Sheridan, so the drop-off's coming up this way. So there should be good views. We're kind of leveling off though. I don't know, I don't know what to expect. Unfortunately, no tower. I have a feeling the tower was the, uh, past that gate that said no trespassing. Although it kind of looks like it goes back there somewhere. Wonder if I could uh, sink past. But another camper here, huh? Is that interesting? I think people are trying to scope out their hunting sites. This one's at the end of the road, this is it. So, it's interesting, huh? Kind of disappointed. I guess I'll head back. <sighs> Still good though. It's good to explore the area. I intend to be at my campsite one other night because today, the day has been super clear and then tonight's supposed to be clear as well. So I'm gonna get at least one or two good time lapse att attempts in. So, I'm actually gonna go to sleep around six. It's like to wake up at 11.30 maybe. So tonight the moon's gonna be about 6%. I use a little app called Sun Position on Android. It's pretty nice, uh, I use the demo version so you can only give you real time stats. I guess with the pro version you can tell it what day so you can plan out your trips better. What's really nice about the Sun Position app is they have a augmented reality type thing where you can hold your phone up and it'll show you where the sun's gonna rise and where it's gonna set. So that way, if you are gonna try to film the sunrise or sunset, you're not kind of blind, just pointing in the dark. <laughs> kind of have an idea of which way to point. So that's really nice. It also tells you sunrise, sunset, golden hour times, as well as moonrise and moonset. And that's really useful for taking pictures of the Milky Way because you really need to know when the moon's gonna be up or if it's gonna be full, you're not gonna see the Milky Way, so it's not as good. So it really helps, and according to that, today's the, tonight's gonna be another ideal night for Milky Way photography, so I'll do that again tonight, and then tomorrow, I was gonna start exploring this road and check out what there is to see. Mm -hmm. Too bad, no trespassing. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while you get ATVs and trucks just kind of cruising the road up there. I think they want, I saw three go up here just to explore. So either they're out just exploring and having fun or they're scoping out camps like these two have done. I don't know. What's funny is this camper right here, I think it's the same exact camper that you see in the Google Maps satellite pictures. It's the same size, same look. I don't know. These are the first snow-capped mountains I've seen since leaving Yosemite, I think, last year. I haven't really gone anywhere with mountains high enough for this. I've seen a lot of other mountains, but they're all shorter, maybe 5,000 feet. Those are the first higher than 12. Clouds Peak is 13,100 over there. It just made me so happy when I was driving west and just seeing them in the background. I didn't even know what they were, but it's cool knowing what they are now and knowing that I can climb tallest one there once the snow is gone they say July through August is the best time so I really look forward to it I love seeing snow covered mountains late June it's just amazing it's so beautiful look at that dirt road over there heads towards there sort of it's got a lot of up and down to go but maybe it goes to the trailhead I checked on uh, the maps as much as I could to see if there are any other trails off here and I only found four decent ones on all trails. I checked Gaia as well, not much here. They're mostly on the southern end. This road here is all gravel and uh, it's not much there. But on the southern end it's actually a real road and all the trailheads are off, dirt roads off there. And you have to get to and I guess some of the ones, some of the trailheads, I guess especially the one that goes to Clouds Peak, it's super crowded because there's so many lakes that go from there as well. 
and uh, I will definitely hit some of those lakes. There are several lakes along the way if you go towards South's Peak, so I'll see those. And there are a couple other lakes off to the side, so I'd like to spend at least two, three days there. And Cloud's Peak is actually a 22-something hike, so people recommend going, camping out near some waterfalls, and then it's a uh, another 5,000-foot climb to something I just walked by. Check this out. Check that out. Bones. Right in front of my camp spot. I didn't even notice that. Hmm, what kind of bones they are. I'm guessing deer, obviously. Super old, white. I see a beetle on it, but no, no flies. Super old. That's interesting. Look at those views. Gosh. And here's my car. Ah, oh, now I gotta blur out the license plate. Yes, I do have the awning set up today. This is east. So when the sun's up in the morning, I set it up with the reflection side up. So keep the sun out of the doors and the side of the car. So it helps keep the car cool. And fortunately, all these trees are on this side. So maybe two more hours, maybe an hour and a half, actually. Some of the shade's already getting on top of the car. The car will be shaded, so it'll be nice and cool. So it's a beautiful spot to stay cool. The only catch is it's kind of on an incline, so I'm sleeping weird, but uh, I mean, you do what you have to do. You can't really complain when you get views like this right off the front of the car like that. And the Milky Way just so bright. So many shooting stars last night too. Oh my gosh. And I haven't seen a single plane fly over here. So you're not gonna mess up your photos like yeah a lot of the time you when you do a Milky Way shot you have to leave the shutter open for a long time like 20 seconds and if you don't see it you're gonna see a plane go through and you can tell a plane differently from like a meteor or something like that or a satellite flying through there because it blinks and you'll see like a bright spot and a dim line bright spot dim line but last night's time-lapse I was just flipping through it real quickly I didn't get to see it because I didn't process it yet but there are tons of shooting stars I think some may have been satellites because they start at one frame, edge of the frame and goes out the other. The ones that just kind of appear in the middle, those are the shooting stars. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Can't wait for tonight. So I'll talk to you later. And everyone, have a nice day. Enjoy the drone footage of this area. It's absolutely beautiful. I highly recommend taking a drive up here up north of, or just out of Bighorn. Some people may not enjoy it as much, but I, I really enjoyed it. I tried to film some, but I thought it'd be more important to drive up there because one of my wheels did slip a little because so I popped it in four-wheel drive. And uh, there were a lot of cars coming down because of all the rains that were coming. There was a thunderstorm coming when I came up here, so it was kind of crazy. Yeah, it's a beautiful spot, so definitely come up here and explore. I think the southern spot's supposed to be more interesting, so I can't wait to go see that. And uh, talk to you later. Thank you.